for the old Mercedes diesel owner, the number one enemy of winter driving is temperature. You know, we all know when it gets really cold, it can be really frustrating to try to get a diesel running. And in my first video on this series, I talked about the importance of tuning, that you need a properly tuned engine. Yes, that's true. And in the second series, I talked about a very strong, healthy pre-glow system and how to make sure yours is working properly before uh, the cold weather of winter comes your way. So in this video, I want to talk a little bit more about what you can do to fight cold temperatures. You know, if you have a garage and can stick the car in a nice, warm, heated garage, well, a lot of your problems will be solved. But if you don't have a garage and have to leave the car outside, there's three things in, in that engine compartment that you need to keep warm, or at least to heat, in order for the engine to start easier on a very cold morning. And those three things are, number one, the oil in the engine, number two, the fuel in the engine, and number three, the battery. There's ways to heat those three things individually and we carry those products and kits on our website which you can install in your own diesel. They're not expensive and they're not difficult to install but each one of these kits will heat one or, or all three of those things I just mentioned. Let's talk first about the blanket heater that we supply. This is a very small and very efficient a 50 watt heater, 12 volts, it runs right off your car battery and if you look closely here it has a stretch adapter to it and velcro so you can just wrap it right around the factory filter and hold it in place with this velcro strap. We include a kit with the proper wiring connectors and how to wire this up to your car's electrical system. So this can work on the factory fuel filter and I also recommend if you put an additional fuel filter in your diesel, for instance, if you're running B100 biodiesel or, or waste vegetable oil, it's very important to heat the uh, filter. And you can use this blanket wrap on the larger filters, as you can see here, to warm the fuel. Now this only occurs when you turn the key on, so it's not warming the fuel overnight. Next, we have, you see what this is? that sits right underneath your battery. When your battery temperature drops, you can lose as much as 30 to 40% of the cranking efficiency of most batteries. And by putting this blanket under the battery and plugging it in to your 10, 110 volt outlet in your garage, this is going to keep the battery warm at night so when you go to start the car in the morning, you'll get full efficiency from that battery. And then finally, I wanna talk about the engine oil pan heater. You, you know, if you've had a diesel, you've heard about block heaters, you know that these block heaters will heat the coolant in the engine. But remember, most of the coolant in your engine is at the top of the engine, and heat rises. So when you use a coolant-based block heater, you're heating the coolant and the head, and yes, there's an advantage to that, because you do get the pre go chambers warm, and the top of that head and cylinder will be all warm when you go to crank the engine but it doesn't heat the oil that well. The oil sits in the bottom of the pan and if you try to start a very cold diesel engine with cold oil, that oil is very thick and it can cause enough friction in the cranking of the engine to slow down your starting sequence. So I prefer engine oil heaters. You put these right on the bottom of the engine oil pan, plug them into 110 volt power, once again in your garage or an outlet outside your house, and this heats the oil and the warm temperature in the oil then rises up through the engine will heat the rest of the engine. Granted, it doesn't do one thing as well as a, as a coolant block heater does. It doesn't heat up that coolant so you get instant heat when you turn your heater on after starting the car. But this is a very efficient and effective way to help with cold weather starting. These Engine oil heaters are much more efficient than the block heaters and much less prone to failure. You old diesel owners know if you've lost that factory coolant block heater, you know how difficult it is to remove and to try to replace that. And along with this uh, engine oil heater, we include full instructions and some other special supplies that you'll need to be able to install this yourself. So if you have an older diesel and are driving in really cold temperatures, we're talking probably below 20 degrees Fahrenheit, 
and you have to try to get this old diesel started in really cold, like zero degree weather, I highly recommend that you consider installing either one or all three of these electrical heaters in your diesel to help with your cold weather starting. You know, there's a couple other things I have to share with you. Uh, when, when you're dealing with getting a diesel started in w really cold weather, I'm talking below zero, you, you sometimes have to get pretty creative. And so I thought, uh, before I wrap this video up, I should tell you a few stories about some of the things I've had to do. Now with Mercedes diesels, um, one of the tricks we use, especially on, on old, the older diesels that are running on waste vegetable oil, you know, you get up and try to get that engine started and you've got some vegetable oil in those injectors and they just don't want to fire. And so you, you kind of scratch your head and say, well, you know, it's just crank, 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 plit, plit, and maybe pop and bang, but it just won't go. Well, here's an old trick that, that we've used for years and that's you're going to have to run into the house, get a big pan of water and get that water boiling and bring it out and pour it, literally pour the hot boiling water over the injectors and the hard injector lines. What that is going to do is it's going to kind of warm up the injectors and possibly a little bit of the pre-chamber, but you're going to be able to thin that fuel out in the lines and in the injector housings themselves. And a lot of times you'll be able to jump in the car and get on that glow, uh, pre-glow circuit and it'll fire right off. So keep that one in mind. The other one is, particularly if you're using these electric type heaters and you're, it's really cold, like here, here in the Northwest, we, we get these Northeast winds that blow out of Canada and it, it might be zero degrees, but it's literally a negative 15 when you consider the wind factor. And if you're trying to heat either a block heater or an oil pan heater, you're trying to heat that engine with the car sitting outside, you may be wasting your time. You need to be able to trap the heat and what you can do is open the hood, you know, let's say you plug these heaters in and you know it's going to be a really cold night. Get some blankets and lay those blankets over the top of the engine and kind of seal out the cracks so that warm air as it's trying to rise will kind of be trapped by the blanket. And that's really going to help, um, you know, warm that engine. And then finally, I have to tell you a story about um, trying to get this old Ford uh, Power Stroke diesel running in Canada one winter. And this was one where I had to literally uh, seek the wisdom of the lemon head. Because I was up in Canada, we were camping out, we were snow camping in zero degree weather. You know, I wish I had an electric heater to <laughs> keep my sleeping bag warm that night. But we got up uh, the next morning and my buddy tried to get his Ford F-250 power stroke started and it just wouldn't fire. It would crank, you know, and it would sputter and it would crank. And with the wind chill factor, we were probably talking minus 10, maybe minus 10 or minus. So I'm sitting there thinking, okay, how am I gonna get, get this thing warm? You know, there's no electricity anywhere in sight. And then it suddenly dawned on me, wow, I've got a Coleman cook stove. So we got out the Coleman cook stove we put it under the car, right under the engine uh, oil pan. We got a bunch of blankets that we had been used for, for camping in the snow, and we covered that whole engine compartment with blankets. And I fired up that Coleman cook stove, and we let that thing run for about 30 minutes. And finally, the engine started to warm up. And you're right, we got in there, and that thing just fired right off. So when you're faced with these kind of problems in cold weather diesel, starting, don't be afraid to use a little creativity and you'll be able to get that thing started. Once again, heat is the secret.